today's video we're going to take a look at Wi-Fi location services and how they can be integrated as part of our wireless LAN designs. This video forms part of the CCMP Enterprise Core Exam Series 350-401. The exam topic covered in this video is 1.2b, which is location services in a wireless LAN design. So first things first, location services, also known as RTLS, which stands for Real-Time Location Services. These can be used to track the location of a number of different assets in real time. These could be things like users and people, devices and equipment, or even rogue devices on our wireless network. This in turn provides an extremely powerful indoor location service that can be used to track assets within an indoor building, push marketing material to users depending on their location within a building, track where people are congregating or places they visit most, and finally it can be extremely useful for indoor wayfinding at a large conference centre to determine the exact location of the user and provide them step-by-step -step instructions to get them to their required location. So real-time location services can be extremely beneficial in a number of scenarios, for example hospitals for tracking the location of vital medical equipment or the location of key medical employees like doctors. It can be good in retail for things like tracking where shoppers walk, what they're looking at, and pushing tailored marketing to the users. Finally, location services can be extremely beneficial for public events. Take, for example, Cisco Live. An app is provided to the user, which then gives them a detailed view of busy areas within the venue, depending on the amount of people in that area. It also provides step-by-step -step directions to get to events within Cisco Live, and tailored push notifications, depending on your location within the event. So now we have a good understanding of the benefits RTLS provides and the scenarios that can be used in, let's take a look at some recommendations and best practices when working with location services. First of all, it's recommended that we have a minimum of three access points that can detect devices across the indoor location. In addition to this, these APs must be able to detect the signal strength at greater than minus 75 dBm to be effective. On top of this, for RTLS to work, we require the following components. A location network. This usually consists of our APs, or Bluetooth Low Energy Beacons. A location engine to track and determine the location of assets for tracking. And finally, a mapping system to plot the location of the tracked assets on an indoor plan of the building. Unlike traditional Wi-Fi designs, when designing networks for location services, it's recommended to place the APs at the perimeter of the room as shown in the example here. In addition to this, it's also recommended to dedicate radios or modules to location services. This is to avoid mass channel overlap with the amount of additional APs required to perform accurate location services. So there are two ways that we can provide real-time location services. These are via Wi-Fi or BLE, also known as Bluetooth Low Energy. Both of these are built into all new APs provided by Cisco. There are four categories for tracking assets with real-time location services. These are nearest cell, angulation, laceration, and pattern recognition. So let's take a deeper look into these methods. First of all, we'll take a look at cell of origin. This is the simplest form of location tracking that can be used and tracks the location of an asset by determining its presence within a cell, or in simpler terms, the AP in which you're connected to. As you can imagine, the accuracy of this highly depends on the amount of APs we have in our environment and the density of them. The location will be determined by the strongest signal and the AP the client decides to associate with. For example, we may only have one AP that covers a large area of the building due to the lack of AP density. As such, this will provide a large area in which the asset could be located and potentially only providing room level accuracy. Next up we have Time of Arrival, or TOA for short. This method of location tracking requires at least three access points instead of the one required for cell of origin. Time of Arrival uses the RSSI of the asset we're tracking to trilaterate X and Y coordinates. A downside of using time of arrival tracking is the need for precise time synchronization across all access points and the assets being tracked. Time of arrival uses the propagated signal transmission and velocity of the signal sent to the track device to calculate the location of the device. All APs that can hear the device at greater than minus 75 dBm use the synchronized time to determine the calculations and location of the device. 
Similar to time of arrival, we have time difference of arrival, also known as TDOA. This method uses relative time measurements at each receiving AP instead of using absolute time measurements. This therefore means that synchronized time is not required from track devices and the time of transmission to track the asset. How time difference of arrival works is the tracked asset will transmit a signal. The signal is then received on at least three or more access points, which have synchronized time, to determine the location of an asset. Each AP that receives the transmission from the tracked asset will be different, and as such, time difference of arrival uses this to determine the location of the device. Finally, angle of arrival, also known as AOA. This uses one or more antennas within an AP to determine the arrival time of received signal from a tracked asset. It does this by using spatial streams between the antennas and the AP to determine the angle and arrival of the signal. This method of location services works similar to how human hearing works. The multiple APs will receive the signal from the tracked asset and then determine between them which direction it came from. We can use multiple techniques within our wireless design to make our location services more accurate. Finally, before I end the video, I just wanted to briefly go over BLE location services. However, we won't go into much depth as this isn't covered as part of the Enterprise Core exam. So BLE tracking is done via BLE modules. These can be separate from our APs. However, you'll find in most modern Cisco access points they come installed with a BLE module that can be enabled if required. Devices are then tracked via the BLE beacons from the devices. The location tracking is completed similarly to methods explained within the video. And there we have it. That's a complete overview of real-time location services and how we can implement them into our wireless LAN design. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Apart from that, remember to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed for more CCMP Enterprise videos. Hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.